Hello everyone, this is Zatras Roger and you are watching the 7th episode of our programming series featuring Eclipse Software Development Kit. In this episode we will quickly peek into the existence and usage of code repositories such as CVS, SVN or Git. There will be more follow-up episodes where all the details on installation and proper use of SVN and Git will be explained. However, in this episode we will look into versioning systems in general first. So, let the party begin. Let's say we have updated our age calculator program with some new features and they are ready to become public now. Since I am the only person working on the project, it would be pretty common to use an FTP client to transfer files to the live server in this case. I can even choose to only override certain files, so only updated files will be transferred and everything else would be left intact. As I said, this is quite common practice for small projects with a single webmaster. But what if we were to work on a shared project where multiple people work on the same code base? If we change a portion of the index.php file and someone else has also changed another portion of the same file, we would override the other person's changes if we simply uploaded our index.php now. On the other hand, we would override our own changes if we tried to transfer index.php from the live server back to our computer. And this is only one file we are talking about. What if our colleague updated 10 files? How do we handle such situation? If we didn't have anything else but FTP at hand, we would most probably, and I owe a huge thanks to Eclipse for this functionality, had to make two separate copies of the same code. First one would simply be the latest copy of our FTP, and the second one would be working copy, where we would work on a project locally until our new functionality was ready. At that point we would update the FTP copy to the latest code and use Eclipse to compare these two projects side by side. Using this technique we can compare what has changed and synchronize the code as needed. This however would be a huge pain, especially since we have to synchronize every single change file by the hand. Now we already talked about local history in Eclipse in one of our previous episodes. It allows you to see a certain number of local file modifications, which we call snapshots. These snapshots are being created by Eclipse itself as we code, so there is no need for any additional action here. Versioning systems work in a similar manner. The main difference would be that there are no automatic snapshots and each developer puts their code changes into the repository manually. Also, each code commit can, and mostly should, contain commands about what has changed in that particular revision. History of these commits is stored on a remote server, in other words, in a remote code repository. This is a sort of a central point where everything that took place developer-wise is stored and can be accessed from all over the internet world. You can see what files have been changed with each code commit, by whom and also the command for the commit. You can compare these revisions in the same way we compared our two calculator projects side by side. You can also create branches so multiple groups of people can work on the different modules for the same application separately without interfering with each other's commits. Let's make a small change to our current copy of the code by adding an extra line and deleting another one. Now all we need to do is to synchronize our code with the repository and we'll see all the files that were changed either on our side or on the server side by someone else. A huge advantage here is that instead of copy-pasting all the code from one side to another, like we had to do in the FTP comparison, we will simply be allowed to do a commit or an update. You will see what exactly that means in a little while. The golden rule for working with remote repositories is always update before commit. Reason for this is that if we try to commit our own changes to SVN repository and someone else had changed the same file but in different place, we would not be able to do this, as the server copy has higher version number than ours. So, what we do instead, is we do an update, which will accept all incoming changes. These will be added to our code, while also preserving our local changes that we have made, resulting in a merge of the remote file and our local file. The versioning systems use difference comparisons. This means that if there was a code in the repository that was changed completely at the same place where we also changed that same code to something else locally, we would get a conflict. Conflicts are basically pieces of codes with changes on both sides. These changes are completely different and the code now cannot be neither updated from the remote repository nor committed to it from our side. 
Conflicts need to be manually resolved on the developer's side, then marked as such, and only then they can be committed back to the repository. If we had a code on the server side that can safely be merged with our code, then we can simply hit update and everything will be merged automatically. Once all the incoming changes are handled, we can safely commit our own code back to the remote repository, where it will all be available for everyone else in the project. Versioning systems, of course, go far beyond Eclipse and its plugins. You can find multiple tools for all major operating systems that support the use of remote repositories. The most used ones on Windows platform would probably be Tortoise SVN and Tortoise Git. These both have their own dialogs and windows and will blend with your system very nicely by the means of context menus. And last but not least, you can conveniently use an SVN client on your server using a command line to update your project to the latest copy or an arbitrary revision of your choice. This is, however, conditioned by SSH access to the server itself, which is unfortunately not yet a standard feature of hosting companies today. In any case, by the simple use of a program command, you can conveniently update your project to the very latest state. This is all without the use of any kind of FTP clients to browse through all your files and find the ones with latest changes. At the very least, this solution is a lot quicker if you are dealing with large projects with hundreds of files. As an added bonus, there are many SVN and Git hosting companies out there that will allow you one private repository with one or two users accessing it. Or, if you want to create an open source project, you can choose from at least two big players on the web that will allow you to host and share this project with their communities by means of a simple registration. By the way, I have also opted in for several SourceForge and GitHub projects in the past and can only recommend their services. You can for example find the code of my latest project, the Timeline Inventions game, completely hosted on SourceForge.net, along with a blog, bug tracker and other useful tools at hand. Let me stop this quick introduction here, as I think that we have summarized the basic of versioning systems quite nicely now. In the next episode we will look into SVN in a much greater detail. This will include installation of an Eclipse plugin, explanation of its mechanics and some pros and cons compared to CVS his predecessor, which Eclipse has already built in. For now, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and wish you a very safe day. Adios.